Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the internal rate of return or IRR. Now, if you don't know what this is, do not worry. Basically, when we're looking at cash flows, the internal rate of return is the rate of cost of capital at which the present value of the cash inflows exactly balance the initial investment. So in layman's terms, it's basically showing us the cost of capital or rate of return percentage at which point the investment breaks even i.e. when all of the income equals all of the costs of that investment or projects but still applying discounted cash flow principles so taking into account the time value of money so that's a lot of words to digest but put very very simply if we look at this table on the left hand side here what we're looking at is the rate at which this project equals nil so you see all of these rates here the present value in advance in column d is showing positive cash flows down here up until 20% there at 984 and then at 22% this is then given as a negative net present value of 192 so negative 192 so what the IRR rate is is somewhere between this 20% and this 22% so somewhere between here and here this present value would be zero and that's it that's what IRR is so really really simple and I think the books overcomplicate this to some degree but we just want to work out at what point this net present value is going to be zero or when the investment or project breaks even so the way that this has been pulled together here is by taking this cash flow investment of £30,000 in year zero and then taking into account cash inflows of 14000 in year one five in year two, 16,000 in year three, 12,000 in year four, and 2,000 in year five. And what this crazy formula up here is doing is basically working out the discount factor. So where you've got your 0 0.909 in year one, um, let's just say for 10%, um, this is what that's calculating. And then it's simply working out what the present value would be at 10% after five years. This is working out at 12%, 14, 16, 18, and so on. So that's just the IRR in table format. Now, if you were asked a question about the internal rate of return in an exam, they might ask you to explain what it is. And you can simply say that the IRR shows the cost of capital or rate of return percentage at which the investment breaks even. Now, the second thing that they may ask you to do in an exam is to comment on the internal rate of return. So they might ask you to choose between project A and project B, for instance. So they might give you a percentage for project A and say that, you know, the IRR for this project is 20% and for this project is 22%. So how do you know just off that which would be the preferred IRR basically? So let's just put that here. So let's just say that A has got a 30% IRR, so that's when it's breaking even, and B has got 33%. So how would you choose between the two? So here's a little cheat sheet. So when you're making a decision on the IRR, you want to accept the higher IRR where there is a choice between different capital investments. And also you want to accept projects with an IRR greater than either the cost of borrowing. So if they say the cost of borrowing is 10% and you've got a choice between one that's 12% and 10%, you pick the 12%, the higher. Or the rate of return specified by the business. So if business A says we will only accept um, rate of return of, of say 12%, then you would only be able to select an IRR of say 13, 14, 15% because that's higher than this 12% here. So that's how you make that decision. So if you were then asked to work out the IRR in an exam, you can either do this in a table format as you can see here. So applying discount factors to net cash flows or by assessing net cash flows against internal rate of return percentages, for example, or we can use a technique um, which we call the interpolation formula. So let's see what this IRR calculation looks like with an example as well in a second. So firstly, we want to take the net present value at the lower rate, i.e. what's in column D here. So not the percentage, the net present value. We're going to divide that by the total of the net present value at the lower rate and at the higher rate. So as in this one here. Now, when we're working that out, don't go 8,310 8, minus 192. You want to add them together. So you're going to turn this negative into a positive, so don't get confused. Then we're going to times the difference between the high and low cost of capital percentage, so 22% minus 10%. So again, we're going to times this together first, 
right? Don't get that wrong. <laughs> and then we're going to add the low cost of capital percent. So let's see what that looks like in a formula. So here, this is taking 8,310 divided by 8,310 plus 192. And this is shown as a negative there because it's cancelling out the negative 192 there. Okay, the difference in cost of capital is 22% minus 10%. And this here is the low cost of capital, which is the 10% there. And this formula here is going, right, net present value at lower rate percentage divided by net present value at lower rate plus net present value at higher times by the difference between the high and low cost of capital and then plus 10% and that gives you 22% as a rounded figure. So we can see there that this is going to be breaking even around 22% if we were to round that. So again, it's as simple as that. So if you did find today's video useful, then please do give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel to grow and consider subscribing and I'll catch you at the next one.